A lot of time has passed since the Pabuklan Wren has escaped from the Bot Revolt at Crystallia. Went clear over here, uh, this, um, this shopping cart here represents the Pabuklan Wren to New Zealand at the Starbase there, the UREF Starbase. There, they a lot of things happen. I'm not going to go over it all because um, it's a lot and you can always just read the forum and try to piece together my sloppy writing to figure out what happened. But um, one of the big things that happened was they took on new crew. So we now have uh, Junior Lieutenant Tic Tac, who is a, um, is a Kenoshian, which looks right there. And I think in the next take I take, I'm going to show you each of the alien species that are involved so you can kind of keep it straight. Um, so she joined as an engineer to replace um, X-Ray, the crossing guard lady who left the group. Um, they also took on uh, Chipak. Uh, he is an engineer as well uh, because they have a new engine. The crew has four engines now. Uh, other new modules are a sick bay they didn't have before, a damage control module, and a cannon. You can see those are all marked, and they're marked for a very particular reason, which I may or may not go into later. Who else? Who's the other new one? Oh yeah, here's Chipak right there. He's uh, a Kronotian, and the best, they, they don't come with Kronotian little standy, I don't know if they call them standies, little tents, like they do for some of the other uh, people, so we're using this rubber band instead. I also have, um, Commander Red joined, and he's a Minutian, which is a little silly because he's the largest figure I have, but um, it's Red, and that's played by Little Red, so there's the, the guy there, and he's actually uh, in charge of the ship now, so that's also been a change. You can see the ship's bigger, there's new modules, there's new crew. Um, oh, and Cowbot has returned from before. I don't... If you're if you're just following the bot wars, you don't know Cowbot maybe, but he was he was part of the Pabuklan Wren uh, from earlier, and there he is, cowboy right there. There's little Red Commander Red. So those of you who uh, are following along a little little more um, linearly will probably have a better memory of this uh, than those who haven't watched for a while. Um, and that what I'm talking about is the fact that there was something going on with the ship last time. The ship was um, was being controlled by some sort of outside force and being made to do things. So um, the intervening real world weeks have been um, primarily involving the the crew, the people playing the crew, the people playing the real people playing the crew, uh, trying to figure out exactly what that is, uh, what's going on. And what they, they came up with a solution. And that solution is the, the ship is sort of um, sub-intelligent, or yeah, it has this sort of sub-intelligence similar to the bots that revolted. And so the I think the hypothesis is that um, some unseen force was able to take control of all all of the bots and all of the ships and stuff because of this sub-intelligence. So the solution was to make it intelligent. How they did that was they hooked up Cowbot here, who is a, an intelligent bot, and intelligent bots were not affected by the bot revolt, as far as anyone can tell. They hooked him up directly into the ship, which along with the crystals that decorated the ship and gave it sort of a, a higher level of sub-intelligence than it would otherwise have, um, made it so that Cowbot is now controlling the ship. So far they've done several jumps because they're going to a mission. That's another thing they decided on was the mission they were going to take. Jumped across here, dun, 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 to there, um, where they have now arrived at what appears to be a large version of what you might imagine an atom to look like. Um, depicted here on this map by this dot, that would be the nucleus of the atom. Uh, there's also a bot ship going around that nucleus, but there's uh, what you can't see is all these whizzing electrons that are whizzing about and um, could potentially cause some havoc soon. Let's take a look at who's actually playing though first and then we'll get into the action. We'll start at the right. Here we have Merker. Merker, if you don't recall, is a Zoalan. He's right there. He's a Marine. Very helpful fellow. Here's what Zoalans look like. They're like three-armed bugs. I think they have three legs as well. Here's several Zoalans. I actually have a book that's all about Zoalans. Um, so that's what Merker looks like. Then we have 
little red here. Uh, Commander Red he plays, he's going to be inside this book. There's no color picture of him. so He's what is known as a minutia. Now you can see this is a magnifying glass here. They probably don't use magnifying glasses very often in the Battle Stations universe, but it's a helpful um, image for us to know that uh, they're very small. So um, he's minutian. He's called Red, uh, and he's a commander, so he's called Commander Red. However, minutians, their names are are just kind of relative to each other. So if there was um, a minutian that was more red than him that came aboard, he would really change his name. Um, but luckily there's only one minutian on board, so hopefully we don't have to deal with that. That's Commander Red right there. Teeny little kind of uh, like a, a, a sea creature. Here we have Dr. Zesh. He just joined the crew. He's the ship's doctor. Uh, he's a scientist by trade, but he specializes in medical things. Um, there's a lot of pictures of Zaloxians. This would probably be the closest because it's wearing green. Um, a lot of things are color-coded in this game. So I think if you're it's gr green is the color of science. So here we have a Zaloxian. You can see he has little eyes on each of his um, arms there, and there's his mouth. And I think there's that's a closed eye there. Let's see another picture of a Zaloxian. I don't know, it looks like a, a mouse. So the eyes are on the appendages and not on that. And he gets to choose how many appendages he's using for carrying things and how many he's using for um, holding things and how many things he's using for moving. This is Ch Chappie. Chappie's playing Chapach. And his name's a palindrome. The reason why is because he's a Cronosian. And let's find the Cronosian in this book here. I really like this book, by the way. Um, just came out, How Much for Your Planet? It has this map. It puts the whole game in context. I mean, I, I never... I'm kind of playing Battle Stations as a semi-RPG, but I don't think it's really a role-playing game. Um, but if you if you want to play it at all like a role-playing game, this, this book really helps. It has um, entries on a bunch of different planets. It it lets you, there's a, the campaign um, is not necessarily connected to the military, so it gives you travel times between things, and it, it really helps in a lot of different ways. So here's a Cronosian, it's, uh, it's like a swirl of lights, so that's why I'm using a rubber band, it's kind of the swirliest thing I have that's small. Um, they can travel in time, which in this case basically means he can like double himself for a short amount of time. But it's a risk, and that's one reason I chose Chappie. Those of you who don't know, Chappie um, is in debt, which makes me think he's a gambling sort, like a million dollars in debt. I mean, I mean like, hugely in debt, um, which tells me he's kind of a gambling sort. He's in real estate, I think. Um, so if his double, I think he marks where his double appears. I'll have to read it again before I play it. I, I first I read up on it a while ago. Um, I mark where his double appears, and then he has to get there. Um, before phase six, and if he doesn't, he suffers damage, I think. Next we have the beautiful Jen Corbett, a.k.a. Cat-like and Cat, a.k.a. Uh, Lieutenant Capazoid the Silicoid. Um, pile of rocks here, can't really see it. There's, you know, silicoids are one of the main races, but they're not on any of the covers that I can see. Um, no, they like to have Zoalans and Siloxians a lot. Um, so she's a silicoid. She's changed a lot, though. She has, like, metal legs now and another metal arm. So I don't know if you can imagine that. The metal legs are rather hefty because silicoids are huge, or they weigh a lot. They're made of rock. So there she is. Then we have Cowbot here. Cowbot is now, um, he's essentially a cargo bay item. This is the cargo bay. There's room for three, three items, typically. It just got upgraded in route, however, so now it can have four. Um, but it has three things. So it has a cowbot here. There's also a hull stabilizer and a tractor beam, a miniaturized tractor beam there. So it has some things it can do. Um, but there's cowbot. Cowbot, he looks like a bot. I mean, I don't know what kind of bot. Maybe this kind of bot without the this EMP baton, I think. Or no, maybe that's an energy blade. Yeah, energy blade sticking out of it. So that's cowbot there. Um, Cowbot in real life, Cowbot is played by Cowboy. Uh, in real life, he's a trucker. In this game, he's a pilot. Then we have Snugbug. Snugbug looks just like that. He's a human. He has the little fur. Um, recently, uh, been taken up, being played. He's being played now by Rocking Horse Dreams. You might know him from from videos. If you watch videos about games, you might have seen some of his. So he's playing Snugbug now. And Snugbug, he got moved. He's no longer piloting the ship because Cowbot is much better at it. 
he got moved to boarding action. So he's in the missile bay here, ready to pilot a missile, um, hopefully onto this bot ship and maybe take it over with some Marines. Uh, then we have Lieutenant Corpulent Runt. Oh, and the cowboy got promoted. He's a junior, um, junior lieutenant now. Lieutenant Corpulent Runt, let's see. She's a tentac. There's a tentac right there, a bunch of noodles. And there's a tentac in color, um, a bunch of noodles. And it looks like it's shooting a disruptor or a disintegrator array or something. And they're all very scared of this tentac, but I think they're they're one of the they're one of the species I would most like to meet if I could. Okay, and then we have um Junior Lieutenant Tic Tac, who's being played by my lovely wife. Um uh, and also giraffe, being played by giraffe via my lovely wife. And again, the Kenosians are in the main book, but um they are not in color on any of the covers that I own. I don't own all the books, however, so maybe they're on the pirate book or the Galactic Civil War book, but there's what they look like. This is actually two of them. They're these kind of like flexible stock things with little tendrils coming out. And that's the whole crew. So now hopefully you know what they all look like. Um, maybe I'll put in some fun facts about the different species as we go, but I'll probably be too busy. So during the long journey over, the crew got the chance, the opportunity to make some upgrades. And it was a special time for upgrades because um, thanks to their uh, stunning success last time, they got three points of intel, which made for a great success uh, in according to the rules of the book. They got a tutor who taught them some some science tricks which allowed them to make a free upgrade on personal equipment each. We didn't actually role play any of that, it was just kind of a mechanism and it didn't really kind of fit with, there was enough going on so we didn't really go over that. Um, so the upshot of that is our two scientists who are really the ones who are best equipped um, to upgrade equipment. They, um, all their stuff was already upgraded for the most part so they helped out some other people. Um, Corpulent Runt here, she's upgrading some of Junior Lieutenant Tic Tac stuff. And um, Dr. Zush, he is brown nosing. The commander um, upgraded his combat chip as well as his laser thing. And then um, we also got a new upgraded cargo bay and a new upgraded life support. So we'll be able to add another crew whether we add another life support module or not. Uh, and that's about it for upgrades. Allow me to read to you now the mission briefing so you know exactly what we're doing before we begin to do it. Uh, mission briefing, colon. There is a subdimensional anomaly the bots are using to build bots that can reboot themselves when broken. Now this was a choice. They actually had a choice between three different missions they could have taken. They chose this one because they didn't want the bots to be able to reboot themselves, which I can totally understand. Uh, we need you to get in there and scramble the data stream and get back alive. So scrambling the data stream that's a science action, um, and they're going to need to scramble the data stream of that like atom-looking thing in the middle. So this is actually what everything's supposed to look like, and don't look at any of the secret information. I don't know, you could have paused the video and looked at um, some of the secrets for this mission, but I recommend not doing that. It won't be as much fun for you, but there's the atom, uh, and that atom is represented by that little dot in the middle of the map. All right, the Pabuklin Ren warped in with a fairly fortunate uh, facing, uh, to be alliterative. Uh, got a one, and I did a one, two, three, four, five, six. So it happens to be facing right at the, the nucleus there, which is nice. Another nice thing is the energy level uh, is much is is one point higher than usual because of the extra engine. That's nice. Attention, you are EF vessel. This is the bot scout binarian. We have launched a missile at your ship. Please acquiesce to its impact. The crew has finished with their phase one actions and as you know the bots have also finished theirs. They are launching a missile. It's up to you guys whether or not you want to let it hit you. Um, I'm going to assume you don't. Uh, what else has happened? People have just kind of gotten to their stations and gotten prepared. Uh, Chapakach. I, I really don't know how to pronounce his name. It's C-H-A-P-P-A-H-C. -P -P Chapak, I guess. Chapak pumps some engines, which is good. Um, didn't decide to do his time jump ability. I don't think he can do it again this round unless you do it the first phase. The ship's speed has gone up, um, and we got some more power there, which is nice. Other than that, people just kind of got moved into position. Um, 
Junior Lieutenant Merker went to the missile bay. Snugbug's ready to help him launch a missile. I don't think they're going to launch a boarding missile yet until they've softened it up with some cannon fire, which is what Lieutenant Capazoid is planning to do. Uh, she's preparing to do that. So we have our people in the science bay ready to start scanning this um, atom, and that's what's going on. Uh, we're going to have to end it, though, because it's time for me to move on with my night at fate, round one, phase one. Oh, something I forgot, an electron. I didn't forget, actually. I was planning on doing this. Uh, electron slams into the ship, um, and now things are about to get really real because this is a lot of dice. Oh, you see how they slammed in the ship? And what's our shield level at? One. That's not that good. Um, so we're going to take the highest one out there. And then we're going to do a random facing. So we'll do one, two, three, four. Because they're zooming around every which way, it's really impossible to dodge. One, two, three. So it hits from the back. And let's see, targeting. I guess we've got to do targeting. That should be six plus one, that's seven, straight up the middle. That's the worst possible thing. So that's going to mean this is damaged, this is damaged, this is damaged. This is really bad for you guys. I apologize, crew. This is damaged, and that's going to hurt all those people. And this is all going to be extra damage as well. That's really bad. And that was tragic. So each of these modules is now damaged, which means they can't be used until they're repaired, um, which is rough. Uh, in terms of personal damage, Capazoid got off fine. Uh, Corpulent Runt got hurt. She um, And she also had to use uh, a lot of luck. Her and Dr. Zesh are both really low on luck and quite injured. I don't think they can take another hit like that. Um, Merker is also okay and Snugbug is alright. He's hurt and also he didn't have to use any luck but he is hurt. So rough shape crew. I'm, I apologize that this is what's happening to you. Um, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna film again tomorrow afternoon this time so if you um, want to give any particular orders or strategic decisions before then, feel free to do so. Um, I don't know what you're going to do against these electrons, so we're going to be starting off um, turn phase two of turn one, round one of this mission, and we're already, already, already in rough, rough, rough shape.